A tide does feel pretty nice actually, because it gives you more minus armor with the TA. It gives you team fight, which you're currently lacking on Neon, and some way to also be able to sit on the front line. Like you have these three really Radiant squishy team. heroes. It enables Roshan, so it does give Neon a fair bit if they do want to go for it. Yep, it's also good against raping now. Skeletons don't do anything to you. You lane very well against him. See if they want to go for the team fight route. Uh, but who is playing carry now on Neon? CTM, CTM. CTM is back to carry again? Yes, yes. He's been looking incredible on the carry. He's Five got this mix of remain. this late game heroes with the fast paced style. He's been looking really, really solid. He, I remember him when he first played carry. He's not the, the hard back. carry kind of player. Sad. Like he wants to be active. He wants to fight a lot. Yeah, he's been um, playing a lot of uh, DK position one as well lately. You know, we've seen the Fury yeah. on, of course, the Necro. Just these heroes that he can ball up with and push early, and then of course he has that backup of you know, some heroes that can go late. Ten seconds remaining. Yeah. Uh, usually, when you have players like that, it makes perfect sense to pick heroes like TA, Five seconds just because remaining. you have so much space to farm. Uh, so it makes a lot of sense that they draft in a style like this. And just overall, I feel like Joe Page has been getting more farm priority in the recent games, at least from the drafts that I've seen. I just wonder if Dyer CTM can play back. the TA in the safe lane. This is something that you said we've seen a lot of uh, transition, you know, Sameo yeah. and the qualifiers was picking up a lot. I know I've seen it a little bit through Southeast really Asia. I'm just not back. sure if CTM has that capability to flex it. He doesn't strike me as a TA player, gotta be completely honest. So I do think they're sort of locked in with the safe and TA, but it could be Kerry Mirana. That wouldn't surprise me. Because he, he loves his offlane Mirana, he loves his four Mirana. So playing it as a carry, it's a decent lane. Ten Two. seconds remaining. <sighs> My only query with that is because it feels like you picked the Sand King Five to lane with the Mirana remaining. though, because that's a hell of a combo. Bar strike yeah. into arrow, your lane is incredibly strong. And now, like in the back of your mind, if you're thinking about putting the Mirana as a one, then do you want to go for like a different offlaner then? Uh, I do Dyer still think Mirana is going to be the four, but like a Lion Sand King wouldn't be bad. They could pick up another four as well, like a Dark Willow, something like that. Sand King Dark Willow is very potent. They have a lot of options, but it is probably just going to be the four Mirana and they pick up a carry for CTM. Ten seconds. Which Lifesteader is bad. That was my go-to as well. There's Five a lot of carries banned, remaining. actually. How does the Spectre match up versus the Wraith King? Because it looks Radiant vision team. to catch the puck, jump the AA, get rid of the Ice Blast, feels really strong, and I think you might have enough space. It might be a little bit too farm heavy with Pretty the Templar Assassin. The, yeah, yeah, that's my issue. Yeah. Like, maybe something like Ricky, I think I would like a lot, because you can nullify the Ten Snowball, seconds, you can remaining. kill the puck very easily, A is food. And then you let your TA do the Five heavy right click damage. Remaining. Just something that makes use of the parts where TA doesn't want to play, basically. So there's, there's Ricky, there's what else is there? Some fighter Dyer carries. Some Weaver, maybe. Phantom Lancer. They go Phantom Lancer. Wow, oh, that is really greedy. TA, Phantom Lancer. And Phantom Lancer into Puck also. Like, Puck is the hardest counter to Phantom Lancer, in my opinion. Well, why, why do you think the Puck is Ten the hardest counter remaining. to peel? I mean, just coil him and he can't do anything. Like, he can't right click people because you can't charge them. Remaining. You can't doppelganger. You always know what, which one's the right one. And it doesn't even match up super well into Rave King anymore. Now that you have the shard option very early on. Like, if you get a Radiance early, plus shard, suddenly this peel might not feel, you know, very strong at all. And they still have one pick to count that also. Yeah, do we feel like now you put the puck mid, even though it's against the TA, does puck go off lane because Mizu's been playing it recently, and then do you go for like a Zeus or a Leshrac mid to kind of heavily counter PL? Could be Ember too. Like Ember is amazing here against TA, against Phantom Lance, against Mirana Sanking. The only problem is Lion, but yep. Ember makes a lot of sense. And puck doesn't lane poorly to Phantom Lance at all. Like puck Tusk is a good lane. Tide and they actually go for the Tide Hunter, okay, so they do put the puck mid. I mean, Tide also is a like similar approach where PL won't have the easiest time with laning, and you just have this guy that you can't kill in the front, because they have no answer to Kraken Shell or Kraken Shell, so he's going to get ravaged off every time. And 
and uh, I guess they just think Puck is enough to deal with the Phantom Lancer. I think I would have loved Ember here. I really would have. I would have given them a big edge if they picked Ember. Now it's going to be a little bit more difficult because his TA is going to free farm. And PL can go into the jungle relatively early. Hmm. Yeah, I'm probably going to give a little edge to Galaxy. Not, uh... Or do I? <laughs> Oh, what are we feeling? We've, let's let's make a decision before we get in here. I know it's a, it's a tough call. It it's is a tough call. Like, like this PL pick is so weird, and this tight pick is also pretty weird. Like it makes sense in the grand scheme of things, but it doesn't complement their lineup as well as like uh, another winning condition would have. So I just think it's too greedy from Neon. I'm gonna go Galaxy. I'm gonna go Galaxy. All right. Well, we'll see. I feel like my my one issue is that you said Puck is very good to be able to deal with the Phantom Land, so. But it's not the easiest game. You're up against a Lion. Your laning Sage versus TA is, is always traditionally been one of the best counters. And it's not just the Lion as well. Then you can have the Sand King, Marana follow up. I think this game actually heavily relies on if Yokam can get a lot of farm on the position four. That Blink Dagger is going to come into play heavily because Neon are reliant on stun locking one hero down and then bursting them from four to zero. So if Toss can have that decent Blink timing, then he can kind of play around with his team. They're not going to get this initial advantage on Neon. On, and then maybe they can deal with the PL throughout the mid game. Yeah, it is definitely one of the best Radiance games I've ever seen, though, for Rave King. Against TA, against Phantom Lancer, it's like a no brainer. And if he does get up to three items BKB, Radiance, plus Assault Kuras, I think this game is going to get very, very hard for the Neon side. Because how do you kill the Tidehunter and how do you kill the Rave King once that's up? Like, the front line will be impenetrable, basically. For and jumping the back line when there's, like, two front liners running around like that is very, very difficult. Do you like the Radiance build overall on Wraith King? Because it does feel like we've kind of seen this item start to transition off a little bit just because how greedy it is. So do you feel like it's just very more situational? Uh, I personally like the armed build quite a bit better. It's just... This game, it feels too good to pass up, like against both TA as well as Phantom Lancer. Like it's hard to justify not going for it. But maybe he will go armed into Radiance. That's also always a possibility if you want to be a little bit more active early on, because armed it also helps you farm faster, of course. You always be full help, uh, full health, Please thanks to that vampiric spirit. To yeah, well, I guess. The, the extra thing about Dyer, like with this what, Tusk and a, and a Tidehunter in that lane, it, it's double melee though. So are we, are we going to see maybe, like how, how do we anticipate Yorikam to play this lane? Is he going to play more with the Tide or could we potentially see these rotations to maybe help out the difficult lane that Alacrity might have? Uh, I think early on I'm going to see a little begins. clash here perhaps. CTM? They're just looking at each other. <laughs> No one wants to pull the trigger there. They're a little bit hesitant right now. Yeah, I'm surprised Dai was so scared, to be honest, with the Tusk there. Like, he's like the level one god. But coming back to your question, I do think they have a lot of damage potential, especially early on. Like, that Gush plus tag team is a lot of physical damage. So if they ever catch, like, the line out of position, he might be in trouble. But I think he's just going to try to, like, pull creeps, perhaps. Give Tide an easy time. Because if this Tide gets one or two items, small items in lane, this PL should not be able to lane. What is the itemization here for Tide against the Phantom Lancer? Is it just a bunch of kind of utility for, for the team? Because once they look to group up uh, before the PL is timings, like, does he need, like, a Greaves? Honestly, we spoke about Radiance being really good, but... Look at Crimson Guard this game. Oh, yeah. Against both TA yeah. and PL. That, that feels like a must have pickup as well for your entire team as well. So maybe Crimson to Blink Dagger could be really good. Because you still want to have that additional layer of initiation later on. Yeah, it's an item we don't see a lot of offlaners really commit into. Like that Vanguard is, you know, sometimes picked up. Maybe against a Broodmother, we might see the Crimson. Do you feel like it just, it's a little bit too hefty of a cost right now? Crimson is definitely expensive, but when you actually get it, like, you feel the impact right away. You block 60 damage from everything. So basically, PL just won't deal any damage to you anymore. And of course, the damage of TA is heavily mitigated as well. 
It's just Vanguard on Tidehunter is not really value at all because you already have a Kraken shell. Yeah. So. Uh, how, how about this top? To pipe. <laughs> how do we feel about this top lane here for uh, for Neon Radiant's with the Marana and the Sand King? Been... Traditionally known as a, a pretty strong combo in the lane, is shot. the Wraith King going to be able to get as much farm as he's hoping here for in your dream? Melee's no unless you're an anti mage against Sand King, always a bit hard for the going on him right now. I don't, don't have enough follow up damage though. But yeah, lanes are always pretty difficult. When you're in melee against Sanking, the new Caustic, well, not new, been around for a good year now, deals so much damage every time a creep no, explodes, no. so you gotta be careful. But at the same time, Rave King is one of the more sustainable carries, thanks to that Vampiric Spirit, of course. It definitely has felt like the Wraith King's nice to pair with the Ancient Apparition always. You, know, you have a way to set up for the cold feet, but the past couple of lanes that I've seen with Wraith King and AA, it hasn't really gone as, as well as I'd expected. Yeah, I mean, A is just a very interesting laner. Like, it's really weak early on, but if you get like level 4-ish, suddenly you have like a really strong power spike. But level, you level 1, 2, you just don't do anything. You, know, you, you do like what... 50 damage with cold feet and one chilling touch right click is like eh. But once you level 4, that stuff actually does a lot of damage. So you really just want to play the level game, let your carries get levels, let the A get levels. That's your whole purpose. And we see this mid match up here for uh, for the puck. Whew, that is not looking good on the CS chart. 24 and 8 for Yopage compared to the 13 1 now for Alacrity. So they picked. The puck into the line and knowing that still neon had the eighth pick available to counter the puck and oh well, they've done it with one of the best matchups in the lane and, and it's showing right now yeah the lane should never be this bad though so your push definitely outplaying electricity here because especially now with these uh, bounty runes and water runes you should be able to sustain yourself a little bit better so something must have gone terribly wrong for him at the, like level one, level two. Radiance bottom tower but still puck, you know, attack. level six coil, rotate on the TA, always kill possibilities. And I guess the nice thing about Alacrity is that he's always able to find pickoffs across the map. Do you feel like he has lanes that he can do that this game? Like with the Wraith King AA Radiant top or the Titan top spot? I think any lane really. Bottom is a lot of damage, top is a lot of damage. So wherever he chooses to go to, actually going on a sanking. He's out of mana. Ten summon one though. Coffee Ooh. finds a proc and Ryu. <laughs> it's gonna make him work for it, but they've got a sentry available and and Ryu will get brought down. Yokam, a great rotation blood, here from the Tosca. He's able touch. to pick up first blood, level three as well. <laughs> yeah, makes you wonder then if whether the ring of fight. health was really worth it for the sanking. Because if he had boots or something there, he would not have died. Yeah, does he have to worry about the sustain in the lane versus uh, a Wraith King in an AA? Didn't think he would have had to, but chose to go for it. So he's just going for the full sustain, soaring, and Ring of Health. But they're playing tri lane top now. So this item build might really backfire. If he dies once or twice more, like his entire early game is just gone. Yeah. Yorikam still is has a potential level available they saw him burrow so this is a big opportunity now and yeah they're gonna go in for it the recognition is this slight escape with the burrow strike on nryu is now on cooldown and Januel's tp is just a bit too late so the trialing you know for galaxy racer they're gonna switch it up and you know they'll send the tusk back to base but you know, they forced Januel up top here so now this means tide can solo versus ctm it'll open up the map a little bit now for them yeah i mean it's just really solid the way they play we said that they're a really good team, and it just shows why. They know exactly what they need to do, who Dyer's they need to enable. Tide is completely fine by himself. We said that in the, uh, at the beginning. You give him a couple of levels, and there's nothing the peer can do against him. <sighs> They've even smoked up Enryu. It's just <laughs> giving him whatever he can, the, the walk back to the, the lane. The walk of shame, is as they, they call it here. That's, uh, that's not fun. <laughs> It's the walk of Giga shame, you know, boots. <laughs> when you're smoked as well, then the team knows it's shameful too. They're like, okay, like you're really in a bad spot. We'll we'll commit one of our smokes just to help you out. Yeah, it's a pretty big commitment too. They're now trying to go on Alacrity. Oh, the arrow! Good arrow. 
They got the follow-up, they do, and the Earth Spike, and with the DD from Yopage, there's going to be a lot of damage to the tower. Galaxy Racer, they're going to have to answer this. I mean, Yocam's posturing down bot to help Mizu with any rotations, so... Looks like there's no, uh, there's no defense coming through from the mid lane. Mid tower's going to fall if they don't react. This is a big tower, and Polo, I don't know if you want to posture like that versus Yopage with a DD One and... could be all take. Traps on cooldown, unfortunately. He's going to try and cut through the trees, Yocam. Nice what? TP. And up with the shard block, maybe Yopage has gone a bit too far. He's trying to tank up the tower with the refraction, but now with the shard just expire, and they can turn for Genuel as well. Alacrity's even going to drop the coil for this kill, but they're so happy oh, with that. They dragged him off the T1, an incredible base by Polo Sun. Yeah, sorry, but like the TA could have easily gotten this T1 tower in the mid lane there. Don't know what made him dive into the tower. Even if you kill the A, getting the mid tower is much more worth it. Radiance middle tower. Yeah, sometimes those supports can be juicy. What can I say? In, instead of the objective I, I game. I know, man. I know. It's, uh, <laughs> I, I fall. Fall for the trap. Pray to that as well. Yeah. I was like, oh. Guy looks like he's feeding. Nope, I've been baited. And that T1 tower early on can really open up the map when you have a lineup that's greedy for Neon with a TA Phantom Lancer. I can just make it a little bit more easier for you to get farm on the map and more difficult for Galaxy Racer to kind of channel their forces aggressively into the like the triangle. Yeah, 100%. Like the greedier your lineup is, the better you have to play around the map. Because PL, he would love to oh, impale Paulson. This time he's going to be oh. gone. Bit of revenge. This time they'll get the... Oh, ah. surely not. <laughs> oh, he's making him work for it. Even pops and fairy. But extra couple of seconds. I don't know what they're really getting out of the map for that. Yeah. Well, at least they got the kill this time. But what I was getting at is PL would love to take over the triangle soonish. But TA wants to farm the same area which is like what we spoke about in the draft if you have that sort of problem while you're losing the early game it's could be a little bit problematic shanks Joker <laughs> knows <he's> there. <laughs> so they got one leap charge too he does not have enough mana for the shards and the snowball which is an issue here so yo cams not even going to try be? that oh is you He's not going to find him. This tower has taken them a long time to, to bring it down but they should be able to do so by that 10 minute mark yeah but look at the top tower it's not even like, it's yeah. full health, practically. Radiance and is this just the, the difference of, like, a Wraith King compared to a Phantom Lancer, where he's able to play his lane for, like, a little bit longer? I guess Enryu also didn't have the greatest lane, too. Yeah, I mean, this is all because Galaxy plays the early game so well. Like, the recognition that they can easily try lane top because Tide doesn't need help against Lion PL was perfect. They won a top lane because of it. Tide free farmed anyways. And this is exactly why this tower is full health now. Otherwise, it would be half gone already. Maybe even completely Radiant's pushed down. Kostanka would have had attack. like a fast vanguard. Can't really kill him anymore. But yeah. Galaxy is a very, very solid team. And do you want to put Mizu now at the top Radiant T1 tower? Tower. tower? I mean, it is traditionally, you know, Dyer's Tide can be one of the tower best tower defenders attack. very early on with how tanky and B. And, and if they commit too far, you pop Ravage with TPs. I think it's a very good option to do that right now. He also has a possessed mask to just sustain himself. So the ping top sounds like a very good idea. Just team fight around him. Oh, oh. Shanks. See how much damage they can do through the stun lock with the tag team. It's not enough at the moment, but still, the leap charges are on cooldown. Alacrity is going to swing on over and even drop the coil, but Yopage, he wants his own rebuttal. Swinging on over, he's got the haste, even the backup of Genuel. They'll jaunt down to the southern side as Alacrity just gets out of range of the Earth Spike, and he'll be okay as Galaxy Racer pick up two. Yeah, this is also a reason why Puck isn't as bad against T as it used to, because you're going for this Witchblade, and it actually gives you six armor which Radiant's makes you much more survivable against this TA, especially early on. Does a Witchblade even feel nice as well just because the little bit of damage over time versus a Refraction? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, the lane might be a bit rough, but if you come out of the lane okay... Like, now the net worth is like 700 the parts, not really that big of a deal. You get this Witchblade, suddenly you're survivable, and you deal a lot of damage to this TA. 
Yeah, well, you're taking a look at the net worth, I mean, yes, TA's on top. He can farm a lot faster than the puck, but you've got to keep in mind, that was like 28 last hits to Yopaj TA compared to the, the eight on Alacrity at one stage. So that lane was not going well at all. And the fact that Alacrity has been able to catch back up is uh, big props to how he's been playing, along with Galaxy Racer too. Yeah, I mean, it all comes down to the tower dive, right? Like, if he gets the tower instead, maybe he will be at like 7k net worth already. Puck doesn't get a double kill. Diamond's His game suddenly down. slows down a lot. Attack. So you always got to be very, very careful with how you're diving like that. But they will be taking the top tier one now. Yeah, and this is just so much space. I mean, Tide has uh, gone straight into the blink. Meanwhile, the Wraith King is he's almost got his Sacred Relic completed. Now. In Your Dream is farming so freely this game. Uh, we haven't really seen these aggressive movements that can happen quite early on with the lineup that Neon Diamond's have. I mean, a, a Sand King Murano, very good at finding pickoffs and with the traps as well to enable your vision to catch Radiance out these heroes. Is under attack. Yeah. And we already said how good Radiance is this game. So as soon as that's online, that's a massive power spike. Like, PL hates fighting to into that. Way. And TA also. Refraction is gone. You miss it a lot. It just feels really bad overall. So it's probably the timing they're waiting for. But until then, they probably want to make usage of the Blink Ravage. They're smoking up right now. Got yeah, Aeol as well. It's a lot of damage. Even Radiant smoking up. They just got the Blink on Enry use. They want to reveal it. They're sitting behind Alacrity at the moment. They're going to be careful who pops the smoke first as the Blink in. Quick phase shift now with the Ravage straight on top of the Templar Assassin. They're going to try and prioritize Yopage at the moment. But the damage, it's lacking as he gets another charge of the Refraction. But the Cold Fit's going to proc and now they can bring him down and follow up for more. With the Snowball straight on top of Januel. They've got the numbers advantage, but CTM's looking to show up. The Diffuser Blade completed. They're looking to get active here with the Epicenter straight on top of Yokan. But again, the damage, it's not Still there. Alive. Mizu able to take that last little bit of damage so Yokan can get back to safety. And all in all, it's a smoke on smoke and it's a trade for both position twos here. He tanked the entire epicenter and just didn't die. It, it's a trade, yes, but I think Daya is very happy with that because the Radiance is coming closer. And once that's online, it's going to be very, very difficult for Radiance to teamfight. Like a double life Wraith King with Radiance this early on. Oh, Jokem's going aggressively. He's Ooh. dead. Yeah, Hex up. He's uh, got baited this time. Mirana's kind of able to do that with the with the leaps. And now they might have to set up the defenses for the tier 1 mid. Because you got that yeah, Ravage on cooldown. They're really weak on Galaxy. Ravage cooldown? No Radiance. Could be a strong fight for them. I don't think Galaxy should give it to them. Defensive power, yes. But if they really force it down, you got to be careful. I mean, let's see how long they can stall for, because Radiance is going to be up in maybe a, two minutes here. So if they can, that could kind of catch Neon off guard and, and still CTM is, is not online. I'm curious, how do we feel about the mid-game timing? Because we see the Wraith King is going to come online a lot faster than the Phantom Lancer. Yeah, as I said, if you have this um, Radiance plus BKB, it's going to be very tough to fight for the Radiant, like, at all times, really. Because then the AC comes right after. <laughs> Polo. <Nice. laughs> Shadow, but you're gone. So uh, he wasted the smoke though. A support dying instead of in your dream. They're still actually going to commit forward. You've got to be careful. The Hex Alacrity. Can it get the jaunt away? Still doesn't have the levels. Only one point in the phase shift. So unable to make it back to safety. Now those two kills. I mean, you were fine with losing the AA. I don't know if you're fine with losing Yokem as well. Now this is the feat that gets a little bit unnecessary here for Galaxy Racer. Yeah, like, as you said, that one kill is all right, but you don't have to chase for more. We just said, it's your power attack. spike is around the corner. Dyer's structures are now they're losing the mid tower. And they're gonna get their stack stolen as well, actually. Right, it's a Dyer's big stack, triple. Has fallen. Radiance, not there yet. No chance. They got Ravage, they want to defend it, but the vision in the area, it's currently lacking for, for Galaxy. I mean... They lose that tier 1 tower, lose a couple kills, and, and all of a sudden now, CTM, he's got Hood, Yopage as well, Blink completed, working on the BKB. They definitely gave up uh, you know, a bit of a timing here that Galaxy Racer would have had coming around the corner. Yeah, they all, all to Pete down to the bot lane there to contest the stacks potentially, but it's a little bit too slow. Now the Radiance is up, but at the same time, there was a lot of gold given to the Neon side. 
We'll see. In your dream, he's, he's got this item completed, but yo, what are they going to do around it? Looks like Galaxy, they will smoke up. They try and connect with the Wraith King and, and connect to the bottom lane as well, where CTM, he also has some backup, but he doesn't have his Templar Assassin. It's going to TP out the Phantom Lancer, but now this does not look like a fight you're ready to take. Yeah, and Neon also doesn't really want to take this fight. At this point, all you want to do is scale with your PL, scale with your TA. And Alacrity has to be careful here. It's just CTM. Yeah. You okay. know, all it takes sometimes is one wrong orb on a creep wave. And PL is on top of you and suddenly you're just gone. And they're looking to go mid lane again. They're under the ward. The mysteries renewed. Vision stalking him right now here. Alex Race were able to see them up on the, the triangle with that deep observe what they had and, and the one along mid too. That's the problem as Puck. If you go for this fast Witchblade, but then you die like two or three times after, your Blink Digger is really slow. So all these potential kills, you can't really get them anymore unless you want to ravage for them. Yeah, and we see like a lot of the safe farms getting taken right now from the, the Wraith King. Like, the issue with Galaxy Racer, they don't really have heroes that can shove out these side lanes with ease. Like, Tide's not going to be able to, the Toss can't, the AA can't. It's really on the puck, and, and this game at the moment, you're, you're going into uh, a blink on Enryu, a follow-up with Yopage. That in itself could be enough damage soon. It's going to be genuine with this blink as well. So, you know, at the moment, we see Puck's catch-up potential, at least to get towards the blink, is very limited. Yeah, going back again, just like three, four minutes, it didn't, like, it might not look that big, you know, you just like, lost like 2k gold in mid tower, but this is really what gave Galaxy all the momentum in the game. Losing that, losing the puck twice, just made this game so much weaker, they're going on the sank potentially? Yeah, no. Point. He even has an essence ring anyway, so he's pretty tanky. But yeah, you can just see how Galaxy plays now, like, it, they're just much more timid than before. Because they're probably a little bit intimidated by how the last fights went. And, and it's a worry because you have this big timing with the Radiance. Usually we see the Wraith King look to smoke up, which they did, but they didn't get a fight out of it. And now this is time where they're not using it. PL is getting more items, almost Sun and Yasha. And he might get caught out top to here too. In your dreams, got to be very careful. That is not where you ever want to be as a Wraith King. He crossed the line of death. He's fortunate that he didn't get killed, but he was very close to getting killed. Free carry lesson, don't ever be there at this time of the game. That is where, the death zone. What's the, what's the farming pattern that you want to see from the Wraith King right now at this stage of this game? Like, where, where should he be prioritizing his farm? Triangle and bot jungle. You farm it with the skeletons, with the radiance, and then your team plays around there. You want to get this tier 2 bottom tower relatively quickly before Roshan Dyer's becomes an issue. Is but attack. now, they're radiance all playing top lane, so Roshan will attack. become an issue. For Galaxy, because there's this TA with Desolator. Dyer's bottom tower is they do have a, a sneaky ward nearby. I'm a huge fan of that ward. It's 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 one that we don't see too often from Dyer, and teams just the, the information that you're able to get from it is incredible. So. Dyer's bottom tower. I've been up wards just to get a D ward. No 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 the Dyer one. What are you talking off. about, Black? The, the one. The Dyer one. Which one? The one by the the top stairs defense. near the Centaur camp, the hard camp. Oh, right, right, right. See you? I'm hyping up that ward. That ward's great. Sanky is not too great at the moment. They got the epi. So they got the koi on the, and the ice blast. They'll bring him down. Yeah, he didn't kill. Just a sanking. Yeah, he's still farming like a madman. Very close to his BKB. They got away with the greed suddenly. Like the early yeah. game didn't look that great. But now, it's looking pretty damn good for Neon. Yeah, which is uh, or real PL? Uh oh, your okay, cam. He's gonna try a TP. Will he make it? He will. Just out, back to base he goes. And you, you are seeing the damage start to, to rack up here on CTM. He's going to the heart next item. Do you kind of like the item progression from the Phantom Lancer? Yeah, you just want to tank up and just be nuisance in the front lines. Cause look at the lineup. Everybody on the radiant side except the Phantom Lancer. They play with information, right? They need vision, they need to know where the enemies are, and it's the perfect item build to enable that. Hood, Saint Jasha, as well as Hart, you just run in, really tanky, just give information, let the rest do the work. 
Um, CTM still not even at his, his full form at the moment here. They've just given so much space to the Phantom Land. So, I mean, Dyer are going to attempt another smoke, but the smokes from Galaxy Racer have just been heavily off the mark, and it really feels like they're losing this potential where they would have had the advantage at the, the early stage of this game. It's just giving way too much space away for free, and I, I'm very worried. Yeah. All comes down to that one little botched fight. You lose a tower, you lose four kills. It's all it takes sometimes. And they see the real peel, but he's very tanky. We spoke about it. Two they have the T1 tower as well. They can TP in. They've got to drop everything to bring down the Phantom Land. So the Ravage still holding at the moment. So it's ETM. Yet. He can get off the double, but that's when Mizu will pull the trigger. He drops the Ravage and brings down CTM. That's his first death of the game, 22 minutes in. But Neon, they're still going to stick around here. Maybe they can get a pick off if Galaxy Racer looked Radiant to take this tower. That is everything popped, though. And what stops them now from just running into the Roche pit? No Ravage, no Coil, nothing. It's BKB completed as well from Yopash. He's got a DD2 in the bottle. This is scary now. Yes, you get that kill, but like you said, what's stopping them from taking Roche? Yeah, this is prime Roche, uh, Roche position right now. Didn't even see that DD. Makes it just that much easier. And I don't think they will contest, to be honest, if they do go into the pit, which they might be looking to do. Or do they want to get pick off? I don't know how you can test this. Yopai is going to bring it down so freely. And, and they don't really have... I mean, Puck can scout, but he's not nearby. Yeah, Vortex can scout high. as well, I suppose. But they have no Radiant's idea this is going on. And this is a bit attack. worrying. Because this is now a, a free roast given over to Neon. Do you want Yopai to take it or CTM? Yeah, Yopai, for sure. Oh, yeah, CTM has taken it. Nice. For sure, for I sure. Guess I guess they value the, the BKB <laughs> survivability. But you saw last fight, like CTM didn't do a whole lot. Like his damage output is decent, but it's nothing compared to the TA. And if TA gets caught up before she pops BKB, I think the fight is an auto loss. Whereas if PL gets caught out without Aegis and they blow everything on him, you still have the TA to sort of deal all the damage. So... We'll see, man. If he gets the heart, though... Oh, Tusk. He's gonna get jumped. Here's a blink tag, though. See if he can time it. No, nope, he cannot. Very nicely done. Arrow Radiant's to the mark there. They get a kill for CTM, and they might even think about walking up the high ground here. They are very powerful right now on Neon. No Ravage still for 30. Middle tower is under Poking a bit, forcing some TPs, but they don't want to hard commit. They should have the late game advantage here with both TA and PL. So, no rush to really force themselves to do anything. Are there any... Look at Rave King's armor. It's That's only cool. 11. Ooh. So TA is going to shred him in like 3-4 hits. He needs that AC, he needs that BKB ASAP. I Do don't you... like the St. Jasha choice, to be honest. Do you want the, the BKB before the AC? What's the progression? I wouldn't mind the casual plate mail, to be honest. But like, like the Yasha is a no, big investment. It's like half your BKB. It could potentially even just be a plate mail plus an ogre axe. Neon, they're on the prowl. They jump in, but a force is going to place the ancient apparition out of harm's way of the arrow. They're still getting out of dodge, but finally we're seeing Galaxy Racer play around bot more with pushing out the lays with the skeleton. This is what you were you know, calling the Wraith King to do a little bit earlier, but they, they didn't do it for quite some time. So this tier two, it's only Radiant's down about a third health now. When attack. often we see that tier two be the, the trigger point for Dyer to kind of prevent Radiant from being able to take Roshan with, with ease. But, you know, the fact that they hadn't had that lane shoved in for, for quite some time is you know, a bit worrying. Yeah, and it's just very systematic now from Neon. It took the mid tower, just uh, TP top on the PL. He pushes out all Dyer's the uh, is under uh, all the way to the tower while they're just keeping the enemy jungle to themselves. Further accumulate that gold lead. Oh, in your drain. <sighs> Mass TPs. Ooh, joke him again. Just the, the classic support, saving the life He's of in your drain. Are they actually coming not over all of Dio? Yurikam, they'll eat the arrow on the Wraith King. Yurikam's still not dead. Now with the Ice Pods, they bring down the Sand King. He doesn't have a buyback. Yopaj gonna TP in the Outpost, but now with the Helmet. They're controlling up the Templar Assassin, but a quick BKB is gonna allow him to get out of the coil. But now he's not right-clicking anyone with the BKB. He's down to the southern side underneath that tier 2 tower. Still, the rest of Galaxy Racer can bring down the duo support. As it's a 3 for 1, and now they're gonna be able to take this tier 2 tower. Yeah. 
very good fight for Galaxy Racer, Radiance obviously. They didn't even have fallen. to use their Ravage or anything, and just a little bit over aggressive, using the Yules offensively, and then just chasing a little bit too far. Like, he got pretty much three hit by the Wraith King, plus the tag team. So the... Let's just call them the support cast. They have to be careful, because both TA as well as Phantom Lancer, they're nothing without their stuns. Like, they need the heroes to be kept in place in order to deal damage. So you gotta value, uh, value your life a little bit higher. And that's kind of the first fight we've seen Galaxy Racer take as all five. And now this, you were saying that you're a bit worried about the Wraith King's itemization, how he is gonna have not enough armor to deal with the Radiant lineup at this stage. Well, that big team fight in tier two means he has the shard picked up and also 1300 gold in the bank. So he's almost has the capability to go for this plate mail. Yeah. And this is the other route you can go for. If you don't want to go for the BKB, you can just buy the shard and then go into the AC. Because like all you're really worried about is the mana drain. Sure, the stuns are annoying, but you have the Sanj to kind of uh, make up for that. And once you get that AC, you're going to be very, very survivable. And your team will be as well. Yeah, even the rest of the team. Like, AA does not have a high amount of armor at all, nor the puck. I mean, sitting on, you know, 13 at the moment. You know, the Tusk is on 8. So even the Tidehunter, like, their full lineup have very, very poor armor against you near know, the, the Templar Assassin, even the PL you've got to keep in mind. Uh, yeah, maybe even down the line of Vlad's pickup would be very good against the Radiant lineup, but of course that is very pricey. They don't have the best hero to build it on also. And now PL finishes hard. So he's going to be very survivable. Joe Cam just gets blown up by Joe Pudge. And just uh, a three-hit TA who's got one of the best neutral items for this hero, the good old Grow Bow. You love to see it. Yeah, and luckily her shot isn't broken at all either. <laughs> Silences for 3.5 seconds. Nope, nor the Ags, they're definitely not broken. We'll see that after the MKB. Nothing is broken about the hero at all. Oh, definitely not. Well, Radiant first phase in, you know, from the mage to the qualifiers, still not patched, not broken. Yeah, for well, a good four months already. <laughs> Radiant, they are all coming over the top. I feel like they're... Still so. got some power with the Ages on CTM and with that heart completed. So they're going to try and slowly siege down this tier 3 tower. Maybe burn the manor of in your dream. Are we worried though? Let's say they do end up killing the Sand King Lion. What does the Radiant do? Like they'll just get kited to death. And Wraith King is one of the best kiting carries in the game. Puck is amazing at it. Tusk is amazing at it. Like all the heroes are. Yep. If you get those stuns out of the way, I don't think the Radiant lineup can play. Radiant's yeah, this is the, the big attack. issue with the priority here for, for Galaxy Race. If they can bring down Genuel, if they can bring down Enryu. I mean, Enryu's itemization, he's got Yules, he's got Hood, he's got the Essence fight. Ring as well. So he's also now going to Aeon Disc. And I wonder if we're going to see Lion go for that next item as well. Just recognizing that they are so important for these fights. Radiant's the middle tower is under attack. Revealing himself in the mid lane, it means top lane is under pressure again. The tower is taking a lot of damage. They're going to respond here quickly. Izu? One blinks in, one blinks out. <laughs> All right. Radiant's middle tower uh, is under attack. The, the, the attack game. They might get shown mid though. They're going to be careful. Radiant. Very, very high information with the traps and the wards. Polo. Nice. Yeah, he's alright. In your dream though? Should be okay too. Yeah, no problemo. How close is he to his AC? Uh, still a ways off. Another 1.5k needed for that. And Ryu, he's gonna get jumped mid. Can they bring it? Oh, yes, they can. They obliterate the Sand King. And Amarana as well just leaped out. Frame timing there of the coil, getting the connection before the leap charge to the break. And Genuel is gonna run into the park, but the Hex. Uh, that's just more of a defensive one to get it back to safety is uh, it's, uh, another decent trade here for Galaxy Racer. Yeah, this is what we keep talking about though. Your PL, your TA, they are really strong. But look at the network of the other heroes. Sanking 9k. He's just a support at this point. Yeah. So you got to protect your weaker heroes because otherwise the Galaxy will just feed upon them and... If all of the heroes of Galaxy scale, like you see Tidehunter, he's getting 
decently close to a refresher, the BKB on the TA might not matter. If you get double a Ravage, you're just dead. Yeah, even potentially double Heaven's Helbert as well. I mean, that's just another thing you have to keep in mind. Like we saw through the past couple of fights, this Helbert has, has definitely impacted the, the TA. So yeah, that's uh, quite the item here for, for Mizu. Oh, 100%. The good pickup. He would just have to be careful in team fights that he doesn't get all his mana drained by the Phantom Lancer. What is he going for? So he went for the shard, he's going for the Octarian build. Okay. Do you like this? Uh, it's sort of what you have to do when you have a tier in your team already, unfortunately. That's why I said I don't really like the combo. Tide on top. Going on a tie with Kraken Shell. It's very difficult to chain lock him down. But can he get back to safety the team? Mizu protected up with the Glimmer Cape. They're still moving forward. Genuel with the Earth Spike Finger. A death that's not enough. But still Mizu's going to be careful. Because the Illusions along with the Lance will bring him down. That's a very big pick off. And now it looks like the rest of Neon want to try and use it to their advantage. Try to force his buyback coming through. But the Coral Chop. They're going to be careful how deep they go. But the Tide, he doesn't want to buy back just yet. He's not forced it out. It's in your dream. With the Ray Fire Blast. They'll lock through the sinking. Now the buyback's going to come into play. As Yopash commits on the high game with the BKB. But he's able to get the force back to safety it's a tp out no yo cam he's just there the warrior's punch stops the teleport to safety as yo Paj will fall but can they catch more though it's in your dreams able to can they find ctm mizu still got the ravage able to charge it up the phantom lancer doubles down to the low grounds so we'll see a costly fight still that's a buyback on mizu a buyback on yo cam as well under attack. Yeah, this is, this is a little bit unfortunate for Mizu. He was pretty close to his refresher. So we'll see if that impacts his item decision at all. Maybe even an A on this just to be able to get out of the situations. But you can just see the low. A wise king always has an arm to weave. Uh oh. Did we lose black? Oh no. You're... It's alright, guys. You guys got me. You know, we, uh, Black might, uh, might have had his internet drop. This is, this is a bit of an issue when you're, you're in a hotel. You know, poor guy. I don't even know. All right, you know what? We do a solo cast. We got this. I'm sure he'll be back I'm soon. I'm alive again. Oh, you're back. All right, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I was, I was worried yeah. for you. I, I thought someone might have kidnapped you at the hotel. Ah, uh, no, no, don't worry. Dude. My <laughs> room is locked the entire day. I do have a balcony though, so Batman might come and attack me. Uh, that's that wouldn't be the worst way to go. You okay, me? Nah, dude, I would fight though. I would fight. I would. I would beat him up. You can take down Batman, you reckon, Black? I don't know, but I wouldn't go down without trying. <laughs> I know you. Just... As Joker takes the finger, dead for a minute. Did I miss anything? No, 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 no. Just you know, teams run around. Nothing, nothing yeah. too serious. The issue is, is well, now Neon get Roshan off of that pick-off. Oh, it's already up, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quick problem. Who's gonna take the shot, though? Zanky um, shot is horrendous. Did you give it to Xiao? Lion? He's thinking about it. Alright. <laughs> yeah, well, He's taking it. PL and TA's already got theirs, and I don't know if you want the Sanking Mirana shot. Ah, Sanking is terrible. Mirana works as a core only. Rave King getting pretty close to 25 is going to be a, a big upgrade. Of course, having the cooldown of his crit. Any other heroes that are close to 25? Peel sitting about 24 and a half at the moment. So we'll see if CTM's able to pick that up before the next fight. Guess what? They got another DD in the arsenal as well. I'm sure this should be. Yeah. PL's 25 is decent. Of course, the doppelganger cooldown is pretty uh, good. What about Puck? Well, still quite far away from it. Dire. Careful, his radiant smoked up. Enryu's gonna pop the smoke, but he gets the oh, jump. It's going deep. It's on in your dream. Now with the stun lock, they might be able to bring him down. They do. The tag team amplification is through the roof, but in your dream. 
Almost losing this first life. Glimmer Cape with the side blade from Yopage. Able to find him through the invis. It's in your dream. He so gets a blink wave. No, the Hex Puck. Your positioning. Brought down. Yes, he's got a buyback. But now with the rest of the Galaxy Racer have to get back inside the base. As they're going up against the Ages and Cheese advantage that Neon have at the moment. The buyback from Alacrity forced out. But CTM playing around with the illusions inside the base. Is he able to get the doppelganger down? No, he's actually still not on the low ground. CTM is looking to man fire. They've already popped the Ravage. And it gets nothing out of the side of here galaxy racer as they forge further and further back but now in your dreams gonna jump straight on top of the templar assassin they'll deal with the ages the first life taken care of but round two coming up yeah, surely yeah. as i prioritize ctm alacrity doing an incredible job to target the real phantom lancer and the puck is able to secure the kill but they're not done just yet as galaxy racer hunting outside the base the stragglers for neon are in trouble yo pudge stunned up he's got a little bit of help in the back up here of the supports but i say that a Alacrity rips apart the line and they'll bring down Yopage as well. Another high ground defense for Galaxy Racer. Yeah, every time it just feels like Neon is diving a little bit too deep. Like Phantom Lancer also a little bit unfortunate, of course. He ate cheese like a millisecond too late. He got affected by the A also, did nothing. And like you really gotta be careful. Like your TA already popped BKB. Take the kill and, and be happy with it. There's no need to dive that deep every time. Because you're giving a lot of chances for Galaxy to come back here. They were like 7k ahead. Now suddenly they're knocking on the high ground. They have no buybacks. That's just just one Rex, at least. Yeah, it's a big, big swing in net worth. I mean, see. <laughs> I try and arrow the catapult. They still got the glyph to, to do the dirty work, but Radiance both your cores are down. No buybacks, and it looks like, in fact, Galaxy Racer should be the first team here to be able to get Radiance the melee barracks, potentially even the range as well. Radiance Neon, they've been barracks. they've been cracking on the high ground for quite a while, but have been su successful. Yep, look at the tide hunter. It's oh, gonna be a big no. surprise for the next fight. It's a very shiny orb. Wraith King 2, he's got 7,200 gold. Oh my, what do you go for hey, here? He wants to buy. And I do I want BKB or Mjolnir or both? Hmm. Oh, it's the, so the... He is going to go into the... Uh, Scotty. Scotty. <laughs> oh, you sound a bit... Okay. I don't know if I can't tell if you're disgusted by that or what. How, how do you feel about this? Right, Scotty is decent if... Because like, TA can't really deal with you anymore. Gives you a lot of survivability. It's just, do you need more survivability? Seven because this Mjolnir pickup, I would have loved actually. Like Mjolnir plus Puck Coil Radiant. plus Radiance, you're gone. Catch out AA, Snowball. Okay, Rating actually snowball. eats the arrow, but beautifully played from Yokam. Now they'll drop the first Ravage. Mizu still has a refresher and has a clip many heroes, but it's enough to bring down the Sankey. Now the CTM's got to be careful because he's away from the rest of the team. They'll control him with the coil. They'll deal with the illusions next. And CTM, he's going to get brought down here potentially. Mizu, Ravage, he just gets the clip off from the doppelganger. A perfect timing from Mizu. What a secondary use, but they're still going to jump in. The Aeon Disc just coming into play. A fresh pickup from Alacrity, and now they baited out Neon to stick in the area as Yopage, he's still in trouble. He doesn't have a buyback available. He'll pop the BKB and look to turn with the double damage rune, but the damage is getting completely mitigated as the rest of Dyer collapse and bring him down. Yeah, and this honestly might just be game. Like, you can just see that like, the PL doesn't have the damage anymore. Ever since the AC came up, TA's damage is also very limited. Mirana is going to be fine. Your team fight is much worse because Titan has double ravage. Like you just don't have any answers to your problems anymore. And that is usually the point of no return. And I wouldn't blame Neon to potentially try one more fight, but then probably tap out if that doesn't work. They do have buyback on CTM. Lines up in five seconds too. It's gonna be a difficult How do they though? I don't know. Almost 4k health. Yeah, it's... Now he has 40 armor Radiant's as well. Like, before he had, what, attack. 9 armor. Now he has 40. Good luck killing him twice. We were just seeing the impact, though, from Mizu compared to Enryu Sanking. Like, it's night and day. Yeah. It feels like Neon have three supports. I mean, that's the farm difference. And it's also, of course, a hero difference. Like, Sanking without a good early game is just not a great hero. Like, Tidehunter... Sure, he had a good early game, but he has comeback mechanics. Like one good ravage can turn out, uh, turn around an entire fight. But you should see the sanking. Every time he blinks in a stuns, he's dead. 
Yeah, and this also now has to come back into play. We were criticizing a little bit of Galaxy Race, that one slip up, which cost them a big timing with Radiance, but now the try lane that we saw two kills on, on Enryu Sanking, it's really put him in the grave in this first game. Yep, 100%. He overplayed his hand a little bit in the early game. And now in the mid game, he's paying the price for it. So. Brave King finishes overwhelming blink. Is there more coming on the courier? No. Okay. Uh oh, they're under vision. Thanks. Be careful. Nice oh, he spot. didn't hit him. I think if he hits him, he's dead. Now they've shown. C10. Okay, in your dream. Why are you so scared, huh? I'm gonna have to message you on Steam after this game. <laughs> Why are you hating? Like, what, what was that about? I, you could have clapped him in the forehead. CTM is gonna clap the PL right now in the river. Who have they caught? It's the Ancient Apparition who does have a buyback. It's a good start. CTM still building up the illusions. They gotta be careful if they prioritize the Phantom Lancer. In your dreams, gonna blink him forward. This time, he won't play too passively. Oh. It's the crit. Rips apart the Sand King who does not have a buyback to rejoin them. But the Wraith King still has to be careful here as the life is getting drained right in front of his eyes. His Miz is gonna counter up. But a quick BKB from Yopage means that the Ravage is not gonna control him. And now Radiant are finally dealing out the damage. They've caught up the yes, Phantom Lancer. Careful. They've got to be careful, but the buybacks are coming into play. Is it in your dream? Glimmer Cape trying to get back to safety. Now the double ravage oh. from Mizu. Eclipse all of them, but the fall for the backline of Lacrity. He's got the fall damage on the park in our CTM. He's too far away from the Templar Assassin. CTM's going to try and play around with the Illusion Bait, but he will not be successful. A doppelganger down, but they're able to hunt him and bring him down. As PL's got no buyback. No buy yeah, and Roche is up oh, in one Jumbush? minute. So. The, Wait, is he going in? They must have had a gem. <laughs> they must have had a gem to see him in Maud Yopage. <laughs> yeah, Tide had it. Oh, no. They both have no buybacks now. I mean, Galaxy could potentially just end this game here if they wanted to, probably. Or do they want to play it a little bit more safe? I mean... I'm no. Uh, what do you do now? Like, it's too much farm on the dire. Like, you're, you're done. It's... They just can't take these team fights. That was the best fight that we'd kind of seen from them. They'd stalled off that first Ravage. They got a pick off on the AA. Yopaj was getting good use out of the BKB, but all of a sudden, that I wasted, and we saw the double the Ravage house. from Mizu. Yeah, and now we also see the... Newly picked up talent coming to play. The, the skeletons actually deal 58 damage now. This is going to be a very fast push. And they're probably just going to go for Mega's play safe, go for Roshan after. Yeah, he actually has a buyback now. But without PL, probably can't fight it. They're running straight to the pit. And will they be able to fight it? No Ravage for... Oh, 20 seconds. Nice. Late game Dota. What has he got as well? Oh, he's got Arcane Blink. If he, he buy out for the Mystic stuff, he did. So Arcane Blink coming on the Courier. Third Roche of the game. It's the Aghanims here for Galaxy Racer. They're smoking out, but they're too late. And that's a timeless Relic Titan there, by the way. His Ravage is going to stun you for 10 hours. Mm -hmm. But Alacrid has got A on this, so this is just space. Freeze up Roche on. Is he going to coil them? No, looks like they just want to get the, the Roche on and just reset here from Galaxy Racer. Yeah. So what do we have now? Double Ravage with Arcane Blink. I say got reset. Go Posh. Well, they'll see him under the trap. <sighs> Lucky Oof. he had Refraction there. He's still going to be careful. careful that there, overwhelming buddy. slow is for so long. Henry is going to try and charge up the Epi. He'll find the connection, but so will they with the Ravage. The Sand King will get Ravage. melted down. And now with the Coil on the back line as well. As Alacrity controlling up the line, the Snowball further inside the base. As Galaxy Racer want to put him in the grave, but they've got to be careful if they line up for a double Earth Spike. Looks it with the first life of the Ray King. He's still got a secondary life thanks to the Aegis. So now he's going to blink on forward. They've got a big numbers advantage knowing that Neon are lacking the buybacks here. CTM, Yopage, along with Shane now have to stall this one out yeah there's a lot of buyback coming in but it just seems like uh you know every team is going the same way like they're always trying to kill the rave king they get him once they don't have the damage for the second one there's still one ravage that could potentially be deployed and yeah 
Not much I can do at this point, unfortunately. I did not know go, my friend. the overwhelming blink slowed for six seconds. That was... Yeah, yeah. It just it's, it's a good item. It's a good item. Now, I don't know if it's better than Swift Blink on this certain heroes, but on Wraith King, this item is super good. Do you feel like it also helps out kind of against the PL? Like any little bit of AoE clear? Oh, 100%. I mean, what do you have now? You have Radiance, you have Overwhelming Blink, you have Ravage, two of them, Anchor Smashes, you have AA, of course, with the Blast that reveals the real PL, Behold. and you have the Puck Coil with Aghanim Scepter now, and the Mjolnir on him, not uh, sorry, a Glaive on him. Do you like that? Yeah. Glaive on, on Puck? I mean, it's not terrible. Greedy. It's very pricey. Could have potentially gotten like an Octarine Core for it, but, you know, He's feeling himself a little bit. I mean, you're, you're 30k gold ahead. I don't, I don't feel like they uh, are in a position where... Uh, how, how many fights do you feel like Neon have to win to get back into this game? Like, three. Well, if your Podge falls, they might not be able to but get even one fight. To get the break and... Yeah, that is... Uh, that's a really cool ward placement. I mean, it's still been up for a while, but when you're in this position... Oftentimes, the team that's really far ahead controls the enemy side of the map, and sometimes we'll see the, the team that's losing try and get really far out deep in the enemy team's jungle and you know, caught out there. Yeah, generally not without buyback, though, because he's just <laughs> gone for two minutes now, and they already couldn't fight with him there. How are they going to fight without him there? As a DD Rave King, of course, as well. When it rains, it pours, or whatever the saying is. I, I believe that's it. Yeah. Jump up course, straight away. I'm a native English speaker, I know all the sayings. Oh, I'm... I'm native and I don't know them. So what are you <laughs> trying to say? Are you roasting me? <laughs> no, no, no. Roast? Are you sure, Black? I don't know. I would never roast anyone. Oh, uh, in your dream I get... down here. But yeah, he's getting roasted. So dangerous. So he's got their own Radiance Burn to roast down Neon. Oh, but jump in, Ravage Coil, Ice Blast as well. Everything dropped on the heads of Neon. They've got a buyback on the Phantom Lancer, but they've even got a second round of the Ravage if need be, and that's all she wrote. That's the GG, Ares, and that's why I'm a TI level analyst. I called it out from the beginning. Insane. Wow. <laughs> Uh, you said it was uh, a bit greedy of a draft here from, from Neon, do, you know, we saw it, I guess, it didn't feel like it was greedy at one stage, or it felt like they were able to get away with it, but just a couple of misplays to the team fights. Here's the problem, though. You have a PL, you have a TA. You compare that to a Wraith King, as well as a Puck. You have two heroes that, with big items, can do a whole lot, because they initiate themselves, right? You are completely reliant on your weaker heroes to stun them for you, does in the late game is very complicated. It's very easy for Galaxy. They blink in, they stun you. Titus like, all right, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. Oh, Rave King died once, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. Oh, Ravage. Yeah. And then and you just win the fight off that. Much easier draft, much more simple. Keep it simple, I always say that. Pick stuns, and you win Dota. Stuns does make Dota very, very easy to play as Galaxy Racer couple solid fights for them on their high ground defense enables them to come back well they were down about 7,000 gold with that one swing off of the high ground defense and from there they didn't look back at all it was much easier to play with uh, an extra core advantage as well sanking kind of that third support from neon wasn't able to enable them to take this game one as galaxy racer a beautiful performance from them they're going to continue with their dominant run so far they've only dropped one map and we'll see potentially if their second map is soon to fall in our next game we'll take a short break game two coming up shortly